what you have to do hey hey what's going on hi welcome to b-movie mania the show where we talk about b-movies and we're maniacs about it my name's paul brooks i'm mike hayes we've got a treat for you today two two treats well yeah but i mean overall big treat one big treat with two little parts like an oreo yeah Whew. well we're dressed like a couple of real Real outdoorsmen, aren't we? Well, it's kind of get, it got kind of cold out. Well, yeah, it's, it's becoming fall. But there's another reason for it. Yeah, a grizzled reason. We saw a movie mm -hmm. called... Where is it? Oh. Oh. Grizzly. <laughs> Tape number 1052. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's a media film. Yes, classic media. And it's one of those boxes, too, that you can't open it. Oh, yeah. It's, You're like, what? You How do, do I the watch whole thing. This? How do I get in here? It's a whole premise. You know what I mean? Just to get in. Yeah. Like a Rubik's Cube for the movie. And uh, speaking of solving this puzzle, let me read the back. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot on it. No, there's not. Uh, hit, hit us. <laughs> here we go. How many more unsuspecting prey will the grizzly add to his growling list of victims? Having tasted human flesh, the bear searches through the forest for food to satisfy his massive appetite. Time is running out for the forest rangers who enter the woods in pursuit of the beasts. And that's it. Look at that, look at him on the front there. He looks scary. Real scary. Real, real scary guy. Yeah, it's a scary painting. Yeah, not what he looks like. Not what he looks like in the movie because well, he's just a bear. It's just a bear. It's just a dumb bear. <laughs> Stock footage of a bear. Mike, I didn't care for this film. Uh, I like some of it. Some of it was okay. There were there were moments. There were flashes of decency. It started out go with some good gore. June. <laughs> It looks like it was like you thought it would build. Like it seemed like a good opening bit of gore. I can see. Yeah, I can understand. And that. then it didn't go anywhere. Was it kind of stayed the same? You see someone's arm get ripped off and some heads fly with the claws. Is you know like oh, well maybe this is gonna build. Mm. It, that was like did not. That was where it kind of peaked. <laughs> There's, there's flashes of uh, absurd gore yeah. uh, accompanied by long stretches of just a really boring movie. Yeah, a lot of, lot of boring dialogue. And this came out, let's see when this came out, because, yeah, 1982. Oh, boy. Both of our films tonight are from yeah. 1982. All this is is a Jaws cash-in. That's all this is. Mm -hmm. It's it's somebody went into a studio and said it's Jaws in the woods, and yeah. they said let's and do it's, it. And it's quite literally that. There's a scientist type guy, who, guys who an expert on bears. What the hell are you doing up here? I'm trying to find your bear. Well, you're supposed to be down at camp. Kip has just been all over me. You better tell that man that that bear is not one of ours. Are you sure? Positive. It's it's like step for step point by point Jaws. Right. They took the exact formula of Jaws and switched the setting and switched the creature and that's it. What in the hell's going on? A bear. He attacked and killed a girl. Jeez. That's all we need. A killer bear on the loose. 
but I was just kind of bored most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really just sort of disappointment. I had heard some things about this film. Uh, it's, it's a bit, I think, a bit of a cult classic, in some circles at least. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of had perhaps higher, uh, higher expectations than maybe I should have. Well, I think what some people might enjoy about it was there were some, some points in it that were fun and interesting, but those points didn't play out enough. Right. There was a guy, the expert on the bears... Mm -hmm. <laughs> is he's able to go out into camouflage, you know, and look like these other animals. We meet him dressed up as a, like a wolf, right, or something at the beginning, or a deer? Yeah, he was a deer. A deer. And so <laughs> you're introduced to him by, like, a shot of a deer, and then it cuts away for a second, and then you see him with just a deer skin on his body. But the first time, it's literally it's a deer. It's actually footage of a deer. So you're like, well, there's a deer here. No! No! So he's supposed to be so good that even <laughs> you would mistake him for the animal. So, uh -huh. And it's just not, that, that happens once or twice more, yeah. maybe, and it's just, yeah. It's just whatever. There are a few good things. I really did enjoy what I believe we came to call Grizzovision. Yeah. Or Grizzvision. Grizzlevision? Eventually got to know him pretty well. Oh, and we yeah. started calling him Grizz. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's kind of our buddy. Yeah, which is not what you want to be the case in a movie well, about just a, leave him a alone, horror movie. Really. And yeah. then, and then he's fine, right? Yeah. No, he kind of. He, no, kind he of was hunting. <laughs> Whatever. Grizzovision was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, POV Grizz. Mm -hmm. It's kind of neat here and there. And then the, going back to the gore thing, there was some cool stuff with uh, Billy. Remember Billy? He, no. Billy's a little kid. Oh yeah, oh shoot. Billy. He got, he literally got bear hugged. <laughs> like, absolutely. The bear just squeezed the life out of him like this. Uh, that's probably, if we were doing high point, low point for this, that would be my. Yeah, that would have been my. But we're not. Point. What were we doing? I don't remember. Michael? Paul? This movie came out quite a while ago. I think, mm -hmm. uh, despite its shortcomings, mm -hmm. it might be time for a remake. You think? Hollywood or Hollywooden? Ooh. I'm going Hollywood. Okay. Can you elaborate? Oh, I will elaborate. Please. I think that in this vein of monster movies that are going on right now, and I guess maybe you wouldn't call the Sci-Fi Channel Hollywood, but uh, there's been some there's been some pretty serious garbage in even on Hollywood level of these monster yeah. movies come out these horror times, you know horror horror time movies. I think they can they'd make the bear. They'd remake the bear, it would be bigger. Like this one was just a bear that had right. tasted human flesh. I bet you this bear is gonna be big yeah. bear. CG bear. Yeah, oh totally. It's, it's gonna awful. be like it's gonna be like the the descendant, the long lost descendant of like some sort of dinosaur bear, whatever those were called. Dino Bears. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's called Dino Bear. The movie's called Dino Bear. It's totally a sci-fi channel yeah. <laughs> movie title. Yeah, and they're going to make it, and it's going to be terrible. And, may, uh, may I? Well. Dino Bear, a sci-fi channel original movie, premieres this Saturday at 9, 8 central, only on sci-fi. Imagine greater. That's the, the, like, the announcer. Dino Bear. Perfect. <laughs> I was just going to say that there'd be some sort of 80s pop star, obviously, in it. Yeah, Tiffany or something. Uh, I don't know if she's, she's been, been in back some. It. She's been in some, so has, you know, Debbie G. Maybe somebody from uh, New Kids on the Block. I don't know. Donnie Wahlberg. Donnie Wahlberg? Mark? Donnie Wahlberg? Yeah. Don, well, Mark's successful. Donnie is the one that is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm going to say 
I'm going to say Dino Bear's got the uh, Olsen twins in it. Oh, yeah. 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 They're not doing much. No. Makes sense. Yeah. Paul, how about you? Hollywood or Hollywood? Uh, Holly shouldn't. <sighs> Mike, Paul. Let's, let's just get right down to it. Mm hmm. What do you give Grizzly? A bear claw. A bear claw? Mm hmm. Just one. I guess you and I have known each other for <laughs> a while. Mm hmm. Couple of years, so you know we we sort of have a tendency to think alike. Uh oh, yeah. Like where are you going with this? I'm gonna give it three, three like three paws of a bear claw, or three claws of a bear three paw. Three claws of a bear paw. I gave it a paw, actually. I guess. Yeah, not. I'm not going whole bear no, paw. No, you're not going whole whole paw. Just three. Just ha Just a partial paw. Just, just like a. <sighs> yeah, just a triple. This is a, it was enough to do this much damage to me. Yeah. Alright. Whatever. It's whatever. I give it three claws. Three, three puff. claws? Three claws three and a paw. Three claws and a whatever. Alright. <laughs> Grizzly. Well, on that note, let's go to our man on the street, JP. JP, what's cracking? Guys, that movie you're talking about sounds like it really pulls at the heartstrings, but I might be able to do you one better. It's Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. It's a fun family affair about a home invasion gone wrong. This movie has everything. Special effects. Now the home invasion I was in didn't involve any paint cans, but this one might involve a few. So let Macaulay Culkin break into your heart and steal the laughs. Mike, Paul, get out there and run it today. Hey man, thanks for that, really appreciate it. Grizzly. <sighs> you know, I don't wanna like break it or anything cause it wasn't, it doesn't deserve to be like smashed with a sledgehammer. Up next, <laughs> as Art Bell would say, ha 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 Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little something Mike called Video Aquarium. I loved it. Let me hold this up, let the viewers get a real good look at that right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe read the back for them? Video Aquarium. No, you know what? I, I want you to read the back because okay. you uh, read it while we were watching the film and you did such a good job. Oh. You had very sort of calm relaxing voice to go to go along with this thank you so if you would please i would that means a lot to me thank you mm -hmm. video aquarium gently gliding fish to entertain you to relax you to be there when you need them turn your tv set into your own tropical fish tank with beautiful marine fish kids love it mm. so Paul. Kids love it and adults love it because I loved it. Right off the bat, can we discuss the phrasing on the back of this box? Yes. <laughs> to entertain you, to relax you, to be there when you need them. When you need them. Need them. You're just a hard working, you know, you're like a, you're like a, you're like a 41 year old guy. Mm -hmm. You work 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Ugh. you come home at the end of the day to your not very nice apartment and you're like, I'm so stressed out. What am I gonna do to just chill out a little bit? Can I have a suggestion? Please. Video aquarium. You know, if it's 1982, bullseye. Yeah. You are, you are boom, you are good to go. Cause but, uh, you and I watched this film. Yes, we did. We watched the entire, it's an hour. It's a whole hour. As you can see right here, it says, 60 tranquil minutes. <laughs> I was just in the relaxation zone during Video Aquarium. Well, that's what it's about, Paul. Because on the front it says, relax. Mm -hmm. Unwind as gently gliding fish and the soft rush of water soothes, soothes away cares. I don't know if the, I would really agree with the soothing water part no, of it. No, it was kind it of was annoying. Mainly of a, a f a microphone held up to a filter for an hour? Yeah. But I'll 
let it slide because everything else was fantastic. Was great. There was a lot of fish. Yeah. Well. Well. We got to we got we got to show the viewers oh, this. Yeah. Is the it in here? Incredible, incredible find inside the case. There it is. Check this out, guys. Check this off. out. Inside there is a handy guide to all of the fish that are actually in this video. So as you're watching the videotape, you can look at this handy guide and you know pick out which fish are which and learn the names of the fish and everything. And it really makes the whole viewing experience you know, just really much, much more enjoyable and much it's more educational. Fun. Truly. Why don't you read these fish? Sure. Uh, and then we'll, you know, show them as we're as we're mm -hmm. going through here. Well, first on the on the list is the banded long snout butterfly fish, mm -hmm. the clown anemone fish, mm -hmm. the lion fish, the false lemon peel angel fish, the blue surgeon fish. The blue damselfish, the fox face fish, the angelfish, the Moorish idolfish, and that's last but not least, the porkfish. Oh, you gotta love the porkfish. Love the porkfish. They were, they were just having fun, just chilling. There's three of them. Yeah. Just no, back at the bottom of the screen most of the time, hanging out. Two of them had a, a, a sort of noticeable th thick horizontal stripe, mm -hmm. and then there was one guy out of the three who had yeah. like a real thin one. It was less pronounced, one. yeah. Yeah, he's sort of the, uh, you know, the more subtle guy of the group. Mm -hmm. He's probably quiet, doesn't talk yeah. as much as the other two. Real George Harrison of the pork sure. fish. Sure, I think you're right. I enjoyed that part. Yeah, and the damsel bluefish. The damsels. Was there like four of them or so? There's, there's four. They kind of got a little bit, of, a little bit of a posse going mm -hmm. on. Bright blue. Neon almost. I mean, not neon, but really they're very bright. They really stood out. Very bold. Yeah, really enjoyed great. them. Uh, tell you what, angelfish was there too. Kind of a duller colored angelfish. Well, a lot of black. Yeah, I was expecting a brighter angelfish, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, and he was also a lot more sort of, um, he kind of liked to uh, be on the sidelines a little mm -hmm. bit more. A lot of times he would float out of frame. Mm -hmm. And then like 10 minutes later, you'd be like, where has he been? He always popped yeah, back he in pops the frame. Back You're in. Like, where have you been, buddy? I think he just, he doesn't have the stamina. Maybe as some of the other fish. Yeah, it might be he might be more of an introvert. He just yeah. sort of likes to be away doing his own thing a little bit more. Speaking of introverts, let's talk about talk about the false lemon peel angelfish. You know, I really enjoyed the false lemon peel because. Um, most of these guys on this card, and you'll see them in the video, very, very active, very mm -hmm. a lot of movement, especially the surgeon. Oh, yeah, the, the blue surgeon, surgeon was just all over the place. Zipping left and right. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But the lemon, very, he liked to sort of get into the coral, mm -hmm. just chill, do his own thing. Mm -hmm. hang out. So you're doesn't, saying, doesn't need all the attention. He, he, he kind of understands. He's got some bold colors. Mm -hmm. He's going to stand out. Mm -hmm. Well, there was also the uh, that Moorish idol fish. Beautiful fish. Good looking fish. Incredibly shaped as this it has this sort of like a fish ponytail yeah like just sort of floating in the breeze back here mm -hmm. beautiful fish yeah i kind of thought it looked like a puppet i don't like follow. i think if the muppets were gonna make a fish <laughs> like that's the fish that's, yeah like just something about it it was I, big 
kind of had like, you know, like the nose was very pronounced. It like swoops out up front here, just whoosh. Yeah, uh, what was it? The, the, oh, the clown and enemy fish. Well, made famous by uh, Finding Nemo. Mm -hmm. They hung out a lot up top. Yeah, let's 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 touch on that a little okay. bit because it's interesting that some of the different posses, if you will, mm -hmm. had their sort of different. There was some turf. There was some definite turf. It was very interesting to watch because the clownfish really kind of stuck to the top, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the top level there, the top layer. The blue damsel, more down sort low. of, yeah, down yeah. low on the D, like keeping mm -hmm. on the DL. Mm -hmm. And hey, you know, that's nice. I mean, everybody sort of got their own space to play yeah. with. some crossover. There was a little bit. No one seemed to be too aggressive or angry. I really appreciated that. There wasn't mm -hmm. any fighting. No, you know, they were all pretty chill. This is a family-friendly mm -hmm. video aquarium. Yeah, bring the kids. Bring the kids to this because they are going to love it. Yeah. Uh, see what else we got. Oh, the lionfish. Oh, man, the lionfish. Absolutely a, a giant in this in this aquarium. There's certainly the biggest fish sure. in there. Oh, sure. Got this incredible shape to him, uh, uh, but really gentle, seemingly mm -hmm. very gentle. Sure. Didn't get in anybody's face, really just no. sort of minded his own business. Just kind of floated back and yeah. forth. Yeah, just hung minded out, his you know? own business. Really explored the space. I mean, he was kind of all over the place, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. here and there, and, and everywhere. And but I, I liked him a lot, actually. He was cool. I want to talk about now the uh, the fox face fish. Well, I know that this is a little controversial in your it's in your opinion. Real serious, because the problem is, is maybe with the the clip that you guys saw when we named the fish, you looked at it and thought that doesn't look like a fox. That doesn't have a fox face. It's got a badger face. Yeah. It's a definite badger face. It looks just like a honey badger. Yeah. And especially because the the color, we figured out there's well, there was a smaller one and a bigger one. Yeah. And the bigger one was duller in color, just with age probably, I assume. But the younger one was very bright yellow. Why wouldn't you call that a honey badger fish? Honey like the yellow, it's got a badger face, it's a honey badger fish. Because one was a lot bigger mm -hmm. and sort of his color, like you said, his colors were duller and he looked like he was older. Yeah. He really, to me, looked like he was the elder member of the tank. Oh, he looked wise. Yeah. Move real slow. Mm -hmm. Did his own thing. Mm -hmm. Don't don't mess with me. Nobody messed with him. No. You know? So he's sort of like the man in yeah. there. You would he think was, it would be maybe the lionfish. You'd think, but I think the lionfish is just chilling, just waiting. And yeah. if you, I mean, if you're gonna fight with it, it's gonna win probably. Big badge. It's a lion. Big badge is the man, though. Yeah. Oh, totally. Totally into him. Well, that's everybody who's on the list. But something really interesting came along in this video that really kind mm -hmm. of blew my mind. It was. There was a rogue, uh, I don't know how else to say it, there was a rogue fish yeah. in this aquarium. It was a USF. And we kept looking, who, what is that? And we kept checking the list. Mm -hmm. And Couldn't. it was just no one, it, 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 I don't know where he came from, if mm -hmm. he maybe if was jumped in from somewhere else. Might have. But he was just doing his own thing like nobody's business. No one's. He was he was going in and out of the clownfish little turf. Yeah. A little bit hanging out there. He'd go across the way. He's up top mostly. Yeah. He's just going around doing his thing. For a while, we thought he might be one of the... The blue damsels. Blue damsels. He's got a bit of a blue color to him. But it's much more of like a light blue slash white on the bottom. Yeah. Totally, totally different shade of blue than and the And a damsels. different shape of fish. He had a forked tail, not yeah. the not the overall one piece fin yeah. like they had. You know, he was a very different fish. He looked more of like a like a tuna or a sturgeon. A bat, not not one of those fish, but that kind of breed of fish. 
It was weird. A little was rogue weird. fish. I loved it though. I kind of, oh. It's really, you know, throwing a twist into the whole story that, mm -hmm. that that was going on in this video. Yeah, it was it was a real fascinating experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now here's the question. Yeah. That I think we're both asking ourselves. Yeah, hit me. What would Lorenzo do? For a video aquarium? For video aquarium. WWLD. Yeah. For VA. Wow. Lorenzo appreciates nature. Mm hmm I think that this is the exact the exact type of aquarium in this film that he probably has at his sweet, sweet, sweet pad. Hmm. So he probably brings a lady over. Mm hmm And look, let's even go back to 1982 when this film came out. Lorenzo, 22 years old, probably. Something. Just chilling in L.A., probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just got done, you know, inking his deal for Snake Eater one. Zero. Zero, yeah. Well, I think one came out in the mid eight, late 80s. He brings a lady over and he says, come check out my pad. He's got some, like, some, like, neon stuff sort of mm -hmm. on, like, the wall. It's like a sweet loft in downtown L.A. And he's got a sweet aquarium, too. And him and his special lady friend just check out these fish they appreciate these fish and they just make sweet love sort of basking in the glow of lorenzo's aquarium mm. so i think all, really all lorenzo does is appreciates these beautiful beautiful fish for what they are which is just treasures mm -hmm. you know treasures treasures in in his awesome loft you know what i mean yeah what do you think? What do you think Lorenzo would do in Video Aquarium? Well, I know Lorenzo pretty well. Yeah, you've, you've met Lorenzo. I've I don't know if we pointed that out on, uh, on the show before. Mike has actually uh, had the distinct pleasure and honor of meeting Mr. Lorenzo. I have. Now, here's what I think he would do. Yeah. I think Lorenzo would get on his hog. He'd ride it in just... And he'd ride it over to the body shop. And he'd have it converted into a jet ski. And he'd just ride that in onto the video camera, just with his tassels just like flowing in the wind, you know, just and just ride around on top of the water. And he'd notice, he'd notice that, that, uh, that, that odd fish out. The one that doesn't belong. Ah, the one that we couldn't identify, yeah. 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 And he'd see that fish and he'd, he'd, he'd scoop it up and he'd go, fish, I'm gonna find your home. And then he would, uh, he'd, you know, go fishing on his arm, riding his motor jet ski, and he'd find the fish. He'd find the fish's home. I'm sorry. How, do, how, how does the fish stay alive while he's on the motorcycle? All the splashes of the waves. He's doing a lot of jumps, like whoosh, and splashing, getting it in his gills. He's fine. Lorenzo is probably talented enough to sort of dip down enough to like. Oh, he probably does that dolphin jump. You see people do just under the water for a bit and then pops back up. That fish is getting plenty of plenty of water. <laughs> I love it. It's good for him that he's doing that for our yeah. our very special friend. Yeah. I really enjoyed this film. Very soothing, very tranquil. Um, I, I got to give it two fins. Makes sense. You know what, Paul? Hmm. Me too. Yeah? Two fins. Well, I guess that's all the time we have for this. I, I it's it's sad because I'd talk about this. Uh, yeah, this masterpiece. Maybe we'll do a part two. I would talk about this film for another hour if we had the it's time. A real, real good piece of cinema. It re really was. But but we thank you for joining us on this episode, and we will see you next time on B, B Movie Mania. Mania. Mm. Woo! Does this make you hungry for fish or does this make you sort of know?